Welcome back, scientists. Cynthia here. Welcome to Chapter 2, Lesson 4. Our main goal today will be to make sure we can find some of the strongest evidence possible so we can really have a good argument to make to the Wildlife Protection Organization. Here's our Chapter 2 question again, just as a reminder. Which island's weather will continue to be the best for the orangutans? Remember, as meteorologists, we are comparing the weather on these three islands, Arc Island, Blue Island, and Creek Island, so that we can see whether the islands match where the orangutans already live, so that we can find the best location to build a reserve. The weather on Blue Island, as you guys researched in chapter one, was the most like the weather where the orangutans live. The evidence shows that you guys looked at in chapter one, that the orangutans live in some of the hottest, rainiest places on Earth. When you looked at the evidence with scientist Kate, you found that Blue Island's temperature on the day you looked at was 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and Creek Island was 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That means Blue Island was hotter than Creek Island. The evidence that you looked at also showed that Blue Island had 38 millimeters of precipitation, and Creek Island had 20 millimeters of precipitation for the day that you looked at with scientist Kate. So that means Blue Island had more rain than Creek Island. In our next lesson coming up, we will choose one island for the reserve and write a convincing argument for the Wildlife Protection Organization. But in this lesson, we'll focus on reviewing and evaluating new evidence from each island and eliminating the weak evidence so that our argument only uses the strongest evidence. Right now, let's take a minute to think about each of these questions as I read them. Think back to chapter one and earlier in chapter two and try to remember what kind of evidence was weak when you were comparing weather in different places. Do you remember that weak evidence usually had a description like hot or a lot of rain? Maybe it was measured in a way that people didn't necessarily understand, like filling two bowls, because two bowls could come in very different sizes. So what made evidence strong for comparing weather in different places? Strong evidence is measured in degrees Fahrenheit and millimeters. Remember, we can understand and compare those measurements and scientists around the world can too. So, to compare the weather in one place to the weather in another place, we need data that is measured in the same way. Meteorologists measure temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and precipitation in millimeters. This allows them to compare data from all over the world. This is strong evidence for comparing weather. In the last chapter, we used one day of data to make an argument. But when we got data for another day, we saw that the weather had changed. What did we learn about organizing many days of data? Remember the data table and the line plot? Why was one easier to use? Remember the boy taking temperatures in the book we read? And he, when he used a line plot, it was so clear that we could easily find a pattern for a range of data. So that means that the line plot was a better way to look at data. Why do you think using many ways of data is better than using only one set of data? Same thing. That is what helps us really look for patterns and the last part of our investigation and our last lesson, really be able to make predictions about what we think will happen in the future. Let's think back and remind ourselves of what, a little bit of what you guys did in chapter one with Scientist Kate. Do you remember this question? In which city would you need a heavy coat? Newburgh or Oldburg? Which color evidence do you think is stronger, the purple or the green? I'll read each sentence and I want you to be thinking about which one is stronger. Try to remember why you think that. Someone measured the temperature in Newburgh and it was 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Someone measured the temperature in Oldburg and it was 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Someone measured the temperature in the Newburgh every day for one month. The range was 40 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Someone measured the temperature in Oldburg every day for one month. The range was 32 to 52 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So, if we really think like scientists, the green evidence is stronger. It has more data of a whole month compared to one day. If you're not sure about this or don't see why the purple evidence is weaker, one reminder I always like to ask myself when looking for strong evidence is, if I had to make a prediction for the next few days, which evidence could help me make that prediction? In this case, the green evidence gives a range of temperatures for a month, so I can make a better prediction if I know the range because that way I can use a pattern to help me. We will be looking at some new evidence shortly. We'll begin looking for strong evidence so that we can compare the weather in different places, but we'll also be looking for strong evidence for predicting what the weather will continue to be like. This will help us find the strongest evidence for a convincing argument to the Wildlife Protection Organization about where they should build the orangutan reserve. So we're gonna pause for a moment and think about this key concept. Scientists evaluate evidence just like we're doing. The stronger evidence makes an argument more convincing. Now on to evaluating evidence. We will be looking at a few cards with evidence about the island, plus our strong and weak cards, so that way we can sort our data. The set includes some evidence you've already seen. Today is not specifically about choosing the island. Instead, it's about locating strong evidence that we can use in our next lesson to make our convincing argument to the WPO. First, I will read the card that you'll see in a minute, and then you can write down or say if you think that card is strong or weak. If you choose to write, you can just write the number of each card. If you choose to say it out loud, go for it, and remember, you can pause the video whenever you want. All right, scientists, here we go. First, I'll read the card shown, and remember, you can write down your evidence if you think it's strong or weak. If you choose to do that, you can just write the card's number, or you can say it out loud. Evidence card one. Arc Island temperature on one day, 96 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that strong evidence or weak evidence? Evidence card 20. Creek Island daily high temperatures in August. Notice the line plot and all the data there. Do you think that that counts as strong evidence or weak evidence? Evidence card 15. Arc Island daily high temperatures in August. Do you think that's strong or weak? Evidence card seven, Creek Island precipitation on one day, 20 millimeters of rainfall. Would that be strong evidence or weak evidence? Evidence card 18, Blue Island daily high temperatures in August. Notice the range and see if that would count as strong or weak evidence. Evidence card 11, Blue Island precipitation on one day, 38 millimeters of rainfall. Would that be strong or weak evidence? Evidence card 16, Arc Island temperature in August. It was hot for the whole month. Is that strong or weak evidence? How about evidence card 17, Blue Island temperature in August. Some days were very hot. Strong or weak? And evidence card 21, Blue Island total precipitation in August, 199 millimeters. Now, let's look back at all the cards. Here's an example of how I sorted them. You can compare what you wrote or said with what I put. What do you notice about all the evidence that's strong? That's evidence card 15, 18, 20, and 21. What do all of those cards have in common? For example, I noticed they all have data for a whole month. How is that different from all the cards with weak evidence? Look at evidence card 1, 7, 11, 16, and 17. What do all of those have in common? I notice they all happen to have 
enough information just about one day. So, here's a question. Which island's weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live? Claim A. Ark Island's weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live. Claim B. Blue Island's weather will be continue to be the weather where the most like the weather where the orangutans live. Or claim C. Creek Island's weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live. Card 13 was really strong evidence in Chapter 1 scientific argument. Card 13 said, orangutans live in some of the hottest, rainiest places on Earth. Do you think we might need that card still for some of our evidence? I vote yes. This card is important evidence because it describes what kind of weather the orangutans need. Scientists need to have enough information to choose a claim and they need strong evidence to make the argument convincing. Let's think about what evidence we might be missing. Are we missing any temperature data that would help us make a convincing argument? Lucky for us, we have a month of temperature data for every single island, so we are lucky there. What about precipitation data? Do you think we have enough or do you think we need more? I think the only evidence card we saw was Blue Island's total precipitation in August, so we might need to ask the WPO for some more additional evidence. That precipitation data will be one kind that I will ask them for, and it will be so important to ask for the total month of August, definitely in millimeters. I'll request that and I will get back to you and let you know. So far, we have been working on how to predict weather so that we can decide which island is the best for the orangutan reserve. Remember our question for chapter two. Which island's weather will continue to be the best for the orangutans? Remember, if we know the temperature range for a whole month on each island, we can predict what the temperature will be like in the future so that we can know which island will continue to have weather just like where the orangutans live. That is your biggest takeaway from today. Now, you guys have a fun assignment to do if you choose to. Here is your lesson reflection. This is an optional challenge activity, your chapter two home investigation, comparing temperature ranges. On the next slide, you'll see a challenge to do at home. Pause the video if you want to write down any notes. Some of you might have it already printed with, for you, which is great. Here's what the directions say. Number one, choose a far away place that you want to investigate. It could be a place where a relative lives or somewhere that you want to travel. Number two, have the adult or someone near you, maybe an older brother or sister or cousin, help you look at the daily high temperatures in that faraway place for the past 30 days. Then discuss the data and use it to complete the table and questions on the next few slides. Here is your data table. This table will help you write down the highest high temperature and the lowest high temperature, and then you can use that to create your range. If you really want to challenge, create a line plot of all 30 days, and then you decide what the range is. After that, you have some questions to answer. Predict tomorrow's high temperature in your faraway place that you chose. Take all the data and decide what you think tomorrow's, tomorrow's temperature might be. Then, explain why you think so. Answer these and you are done. Next up, chapter two comes to a close in lesson five. See you then.